إن الله يأمر بالعذل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters Inshallah Ta'ala today we're going to talk about the reality of life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described it in Surah Al-Isra in verse number 18 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says من كان يريد العاجلة عجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد ثم جعلنا له جهنم يصلاها مذموما مدحورا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked about this life of this world, he described it as ajila. Ajila means fleeting world. It doesn't last forever. This life doesn't last forever. But if you want to increase your blessings in this life, Allah is going to give you whatever you want in this life. But He's only going to give whatever He wants to whomever He pleases. You cannot take anything without Allah's permission. Nothing in this life can reach you without Allah's permission. So Allah says, whoever desires this fleeting life alone, we hasten in it whatever we please to whomever we will. And the point here is this. You read, Al-Irada is something very deep in your heart, which means life, you're so attached to life. It's inside of your heart. It's not like you own life in your hand, but it didn't find its way to your heart, which is okay. A believer, by the way, is supposed to be strong financially, to be able to give zakah and help the needy. A believer is supposed to be strong uh, uh, physically, to be able to help other people. A believer and defend him himself, and defend his country, and defend his religion, and his family. A believer is supposed to be strong intellectually. He has knowledge. Yes, you're supposed to be like that. But at the same time, all these blessings are not supposed to find their way to your heart. Once your heart is attached to dunya, that's what that's talking about. Allah is going to give you only what He wants to give you. But in the day of judgment, there will, go, there will be a punishment from Allah. Look at this beautiful narration and how Rasulullah described this dunya when he was walking with his companions one time. Rasulullah was walking one time in the bazaar, in the marketplace, when nasu kanafatayhi. Kanafatayhi means people were walking on his both sides, his, his, his companions, his friends, his students. And then he passed by a dead, skinny lamb, dead, skinny animal. He held it from its ear, and then he showed it to, the, to his sahaba, to his companions, and he said, who amongst you would like to buy this dead, skinny lamb? For one dirham. For one dirham. All of them said, Ya Rasulullah, had it been alive, it would have been defective because of how skinny it is. But when it's dead, it's of no use. Even if this skinny lamb was alive, I wouldn't buy it for that much. For one dirham. It doesn't have enough meat to eat. What about when it's dead? Why do you want to offer this? فَقَالَ nabi The Prophet said, what about taking this lamb for nothing? I will give it to you for free. For free. The Sahaba said, no, no, we don't want it. It's still very skinny. And it's dead on top of that. The Prophet said, look at, that. Look at the analogy he used. How he spoke about the world. How he viewed the life of this world. He said, dunya ahwanu ala Allah min hadha alaykum. I swear to Allah. I swear to the one in whose hand my soul is. This life of this world is more insignificant to Allah than this dead skinny lamb is to you. Can you even imagine the way he viewed this world? And that's what Allah is saying. Man kana yuridu al If you really intend to work hard for the, sake, for the sake of this dead skinny lamb, just do it. And as I said, that doesn't mean that you don't work hard. You work hard. You have to be strong financially, educationally, physically and emotionally, in every single way possible, and mentally. But at the same time, you're not supposed to be attached with your heart to this world 
otherwise they're going to destroy you. من كان يريد العاجلة عجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عجبا لأمر المؤمن How wonderful is the matter of a believer عجبا لأمر المؤمن إن أمره كله خير Everything that happens to you in this life is good for you Everything that happens to you in this life is good Why? Because Allah said ما نشاء لمن نريد Whatever you have in this life right now, look at your life. Look at how many kids you have. Or if you're not married, I mean, look at the health you have. Look at the job you have. Look at even the struggles you have. Everything you have in this life, whether it's a blessing or a difficulty you have, is something Allah wanted to give to you. So you need to be satisfied inside because Rasulullah said, أَمْرُهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ Every single affair of a believer is good for him. Why? Because Allah wanted it to happen. Allah is the one who created you, created your job, your employer. He created your car. He created the place you work at. And He decided to give it to you. You need to submit. I mean, you've got no other choice. <laughs> I mean, that's very important to understand that we got no other choice. It's His creation. And he does in his creation whatever he pleases. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's it. إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُ صَرَّاءُ شَكَرْ When he's pleased, he's thankful towards Allah. When أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرْ And when something bad happens to you from your own perspective, you have to be patient. That's it. And if you don't want to do it willingly, unfortunately, at some points, you will have to do this unwillingly. So it's better to do it while you're happy and you're willing to be rewarded instead of doing it forcefully and you're going to be forced to be happy with what you have and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for people who only desire this life it's so it's this is so deep in their hearts Allah said ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّمْ يَصْلَاهَا مَذْمُومًا مَدْحُورًا we will destine them to hell Ya Allah may Allah protect all of us his final destination is hell Allah said in hell, what's going to happen to him is Yaslaha. You know Yaslaha is what? I always tell people in my masjid, do you know the difference between Yusalli and Yusli? The word Yusalli, everybody knows what Yusalli is. Yusalli is Allahu Akbar to pray. Allahu Akbar, you pray. Yusalli. But Yusli is to roast something. <laughs> you know roast chicken? When Allah talked about people of the hellfire, He said, he said Yaslaha. He said, Yaslaha is going to be roasted. <laughs> it was, it, it's going to be burnt. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbi. Allahumma amin, Ya Rabbi amin. Look at the language that Allah is using. Yaslaha. Huh? The other meaning of Yaslaha is that, have you ever seen a chicken being roasted? Have you ever seen that scene? So what happens in that scene is what? The chicken is surrounded by fire from all directions. From all directions. So that's basically what's going to happen to those people. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi protect us. And then Allah said, Madhmuman, condemned. In top of that, he's going to be condemned. He's going to be blamed. Madhura. Madhura, rejected. Rejected, pushed away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is that? Because when he came to this life, he did not understand the reality of this life. What is the reality of this life? I'm not going to tell you the reality of life is that it's a struggle. Or the reality of life is it's insignificant to Allah. I'm not going to tell you that. But what I'm going to tell you, the reality of life is لا يكون في كون الله إلا ما أراد. What does that mean? That means nothing will happen in the world of Allah except what Allah wants. Only what He wants to you or to other people. Anything that you see happening in your zone, in your country, in your family, in your work, or outside of your zone, outside of your control, it's all because Allah allowed this to happen. So make sure to not work hard for this dunya. قال النبي الدنيا دار من لا دار له This world is the home of the homeless. The home of the homeless. ومال من لا مال له And the wealth of the bankrupt. ولها يعمل من لا عقل له and people who work for the sake of this world are people are insane, have lost their minds. Rasulullah said that in a hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad in his Muslim. That's the reality of this life. I will conclude this episode.
by this beautiful verse in Surah Az-Zumar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ضرب الله مثلا رجلا فيه شركاء متشاكسون ورجلا سلما لرجل هل يستويان مثلا Allah said the example of this life is this is like a slave who is owned by one master so if a slave is owned by one master he works to please his master alone there is no someone else who comes to give him some contradicting orders but the other example is a slave is owned by some quarrelsome masters. He has several fighting, arguing masters. So what happens is this. One master tells him, go, bring me some food. Other one says, no, 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 it's not the time to eat. Bring me something to drink. No, 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 I just want to use the bathroom, you know. Can you take me to the bathroom? <laughs> and he gets conflicting orders from these quarrelsome masters. What is he going to do? That is the example of a human being who goes to work, for example, and it's a prayer time, but he's not going to pray. Why? Because his master is his job. He's going to work hard. His master is money. His master is his employer, his boss at work. Or he's sitting at home, for example, and he's watching TV with family, trying to please his wife and his kids. Good for you. That's the ibadah. That's kind of worship to please your family. But it's a prayer time now. He's not going to go to pray because his master is his wife. His wife is his master. His kids are his masters. So that's the example that Allah has given us here in Surah Zumar, verse 24. Shuraka'u mutashakisun, squirrel some fighting masters. He's going to be ripped off. He's going to be ripped off. He has no directions. Hal yastawiyani masala, are they equal in condition? Of course they are not. Allah said, and I'm going to conclude with this. Allah said, unfortunately, majority of people don't understand this. They work so hard in this world and they forget what I'm saying. Alhamdulillah, bal aktharuhum la ya'lamun. In fact, most of them do not know this simple fact. This simple fact, people don't know it. And they will still work for the sake of this dunya, as Allah said. Qulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah al-azimah li wa lakum. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون